Hello friends, welcome back. For today's video, I'm going to be giving you some global news updates on the environment in particular. First thing I have to mention, I hope you guys are safe and healthy to the best of your abilities. I hope you are taking every precaution you can to not infect yourself or others. I know Corona is everywhere. It is all over the news. Um, and to me, it's very important to get news coverage and stay updated, but I feel like it can also be overwhelming and induce a lot of anxiety and fear in the masses. So for today, we're gonna keep it more based on environmental news. So first thing first, we are gonna slightly talk about how corona and climate change are linked together because it's very important to address that as well. So I've been seeing a lot of fluffed up, good feelsy articles about how corona, quarantine, um, less air travel and transportation has led to a dip in emissions and animals coming back to urban places, which is true, but not to the extent that they are playing out. So let's get into that first. So NASA and the European Space Agency have been using pollution monitoring satellites to record the decrease in nitrogen dioxide from China since January 1st, which was just about when the outbreak of Corona happened. Globally, since February, air traffic has dropped about 4.3%, which has led to global emissions dropping about 1.3%. So NASA has said that they have not seen a dip like this since the recession in 2008, which sounds good, but that means that they have the knowledge that from past events to say that this will not affect the overall climate crisis we are facing. So that sounds like I kind of put a damper on the whole hope, oh, we are, the earth is healing. We're, when we come out of this, it'll be all fixed. But that's so, you guys have a realistic understanding that this is an example from the earth. The earth is getting a chance to breathe and it is showing us that in a short amount of time, look at the progress that can be made. Look at the, look what global impact and global unity can have on the environment. You have impact. You can have local impact. You can have community impact. You can have global impact. We have to focus on global impact. If we all work together, if we pass bills, if we make these changes to our lifestyle, to transportation, we can have a positive effect and we can stop or slow climate change and get out of this climate crisis that will catch up to us if we don't start implementing these global changes. That's it. No more Corona news. I promise for this video. We're going to move on to Venice and its dolphins, apparently. So there has been viral photos going around of swans and dolphins returning to the canals of Venice. Um, and everyone is saying, oh, look, wildlife is returning to urban places once again because humans are letting the earth heal. Um, this is true to an extent, but not quite. <laughs> so the swans were actually spotted in Burano, when Burano is an island in the Venetian lagoon. Now the dolphins that were spotted in Venice were completely off track. Those were actually from Sardinia, which is hundreds of miles away. So there are no dolphins in Venice. The mayor of Venice actually came out to speak about these news. He said that um, overall the country's water pollution has not decreased. Their air quality has slightly improved, but the reasons why the canals look so much cleaner is because there is less boat traffic and the sediment gets to settle at the bottom of the canals and instead of being constantly eroded upwards. Moving right along, we're going to talk about RuPaul and his fracking farm. So RuPaul recently went on an interview to talk about his 60,000 acres of land in Wyoming, of which he leases out the mineral and water rights to oil companies. He went on to further explain that he leases the mineral rights to oil companies, also by sell, also sells them water, and then he leases out grazing rights to different ranchers. To put that in a little perspective, only 10,000 acres of RuPaul's property would be needed to occupy 35 active 
oil and gas wells. And for anyone who's not familiar with fracking, it is a method of extracting oil and gas trapped within rock formations, often leads to a lot of methane being released into the atmosphere during its practice. This is kind of a story where you do what you want with this information. Um, I'm not saying you got to boycott um, RuPaul's Drag Race, but you should definitely be familiar and know who you are supporting. People with wealth have power. What they do with that wealth is very important. And if you want to support someone that does actions that don't align with your values, that's completely up to you. But you have to sit back and acknowledge that who are you supporting and what are they doing with their wealth? Because in the end, you can do great stuff with wealth and you can do not so great stuff with wealth. So we're gonna wrap this up with some good environmental news, which was a little hard to find. So this news was re actually released a month ago, but I did not know about it w before doing research. So I felt like it was important to share. Um, Britain is banning the sale of any new gas, diesel, or hybrid cars from 2035. The prime minister, Boris Johnson, goes on to say, we know as a country, as a society, as a planet, and as a species, we must now act. To me, that's kind of bittersweet news because I understand that there needs to be a transition time to um, change the way of life, to, cha to change the way of transportation as a global society, but I think we can do it a lot quicker. It always seems to be like, in 30 years, we will make sure this is all good. We don't have 30 years. Um, this this announcement was good news because it was five years earlier than was than what was originally planned. But once again, I just feel like we can do things a little quicker, guys. The final good news I have for you guys is Virginia becomes the first state in the South to mandate 100% clean power. That means that um, Virginia is going to move on by optimizing wind and solar pow power and start phasing out fossil fuels um, like coal by 2050. This is good news. It is. I just feel like, again, we can do things a little faster as far as transitioning into more of a sustainable world. But those are two good things to at least keep on the radar, and hopefully there will be more good news to come. So if you like hearing environmental news, I can do one of these videos every week and keep you a little updated on um, global environmental news. And if you do want to see that, just let me know down below in the comments and you know what to do. Like, subscribe if you'd like to see more environmental news just like this. Um, until then, be nice and do good guys.